Hey guys, it's Chris and I am here finally with another Fat Acceptance React. Uh, it's long overdue and I am excited to get back. I am using the microphone on my computer, on my laptop, because my kiddo is using my headset. He's playing with some of his friends, so if you hear him in the background, uh, they are gaming. Um, so I let him have it, obviously. Uh, so, but I wanted to try to get a few of these done. I need to get some videos made and uploaded. And I know one of my favorite things to react to, though frustrating, is fat acceptance. And you guys love it. Everybody loves it. If you hear the dog in the background, he's not a morning dog and he's being a little crab. <laughs> that is how it is. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, thanks for watching. I'm sorry it's been a while since I had a Fat Logic video out, but here we are. If you're new, my name is Chris. I have a medical background, I have experience in education with diet, health, weight loss, all of the good things. That being said, I'm not a doctor. Anything I say is not medical advice. Always get uh, get an opinion from your doctor or healthcare provider if anything I might say resonates with you. Um, I don't mince words. I try to be nice, but I do give honest opinions. We don't sugarcoat things around here on this channel. So if I'm for you, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know everything you're thinking. It helps the channel and I'm excited to, to see the channel uh, growing. This is a compilation from a, a channel called Serious Mia. I will link the video down below. Um, I don't know if I'll watch the whole thing. If not, uh, I'll cover part of it, but you'll be able to check out the full video at her channel below. So that being said, let's just get started. And the first thing I'm going to say is, oh my God, this, this is a strange, strange shape. This woman has the typical skinny legs with the big giant apron paniculus going on. Um, she is literally all abdominal fat. And guys, that is the most dangerous fat to have. It is uh, indicative of a lot of visceral fat, and it is uh, extremely dangerous. It's hard on your back and your uh, shoulders and your neck and uh, your uh, pelvic muscles, but it is uh, also just very unhealthy internally. Guys, fat is not some... Uh, bland, inactive object on your body. It's very metabolically active, very hormonally active. And um, it is literally squishing this woman's organs and stuff like that. And and this is, she can sit here and be proud all she wants, but I'm not trying to be mean. I, I would not be proud to have a shape like this. So cute. It's not cute. I'm sorry. It's not. It's, uh, if you consider unhealthiness and bad habits, and sarcopenic obesity, cute, then yeah, but I don't. Okay, now this next one, this person is reacting to a comment on TikTok that said, most of these are TikTok, uh, uh, TikToks from the compilation. So I'll try to read what's on the screen for you guys, as always, if you can. So if you're not watching, you can still know what's going on. This one's reacting to a comment that says, why can't women have more respect for themselves than have everything hanging out on social media? I agree. I don't think there's anything wrong per se with showing your body, but just walking around half naked just for outside validation, you need to be able to validate yourself as well. And this whole walking around uh, shaking and jiggling their rolls and bellies and lifting up their stomachs and flopping them down. I don't know what is so respectful and brave and empowering and sexy about that. It's like, oh yeah, look at, look at what I did to myself. Look at the state I got myself into because guys, it doesn't matter. You can have issues genetically, hormonally with, um, medicines that may cause you to gain an extra five to maybe 10, 15. I said, I'll even give you almost 20 pounds because they make you hungrier or whatnot. But if you are as big as any of the women in these videos I react to, you did it to yourself with food and bad lifestyle habits, mainly centering around, yeah, eat too much. So let's see what this means. Yes. Like this woman is, looks like a taller girl, very thick thighs, very, again, very, very abdominally heavy, just a great big old fupa and gut hanging out. And she pulls her, pulls her pants down and flops it out onto a table if a table was in front of her for everyone to see. What is so 
empowering about this. It's not empowering. It's like, okay, yeah, look at, look at me trying to self delete myself slowly. It's like, there's nothing sexy about this. There's no reason to be proud of this. But go on with yourself. I work hard to make this house a home. I'm not hiding my poop anymore. Okay, so here's another one. She's probably just a small fat in a bathing suit or bodysuit or something tight. And she's saying, I'm not hiding my fupa anymore. If it, well, you can't hide it because it's too big. I don't want to get up under this thing like a fucking mechanic. I don't want it anyway. Dude, no offense, but um, if a guy or anybody has to get up under your fupa or gut to, to find things, you got to reevaluate some of your choices. This is another one of Sleepy Get Ready With Me. I'm just going to skip through this. She doesn't say anything because I don't have anything wrong with people just posting and get ready with me. Okay, this is a girl named Becca, and she's featured a lot on the forms fat acceptance thread. Um, I guess she had a restrictive ED, and now she's gone hog wild the other direction and now she's making herself morbidly obese i'll tell you guys this is not and she paints it in the light of eating disorder recovery no if you go from not eating not eating enough to binging and overeating then you are not better you just transferred from one uh one disorder one illness to another and this is not healthy this is a shame she's a cute girl and she's absolutely destroying herself and it says on the on the TV point of view, your tummy is bigger than your boobs and butt. You spent years feeling insecure, but not anymore. You should feel insecure because your stomach should never stick out further than your boobs. And that includes even if you are a flat chested, a fairly flat chested woman, your, your gut should still not stick out. Mine does. Mine sticks out. And I got big old bitties and I hate it. And I know it's not good. And you got to try to change it. And this one, she really seems to obsess over her uh, belly in particular. See, I mean, look, and she's got wicked stress, stretch marks because she's gained so much weight so quickly. She's into the whole I'm queer and stuff thing now. She's changing her whole uh, thing. She's uh, in her underwear on the internet, uh, trying to convince herself and other people that she loves herself and she's beautiful when she doesn't and she's not. She has a pretty face. She's not shaving her armpits or anything anymore, which, okay, you do you, boo, but I personally just think girls should shave their armpits. At least they're going to be showing them off on the internet, but again, that's just me. Um, I know sometimes it's a cultural thing, but the fact is, is she's really gaining a lot of weight way too fast, and she is not, in fact, healed from her eating disorder. She has just, um, it has gone off the rails. She probably talked to some Hayes people, who Hayes should absolutely be obliterated. In intuitive eating has been all effed up by uh, Hayes and body positivity and stuff like that, so yeah. In the words of a wise person on the forums, what did they say? Effing hell, Becca, or something like that. Shout out to the forums. This is a point of view. Uh, it's a woman on the screen with this little, like, off the shoulder top. It's very cute. It says, don't you want to lose weight? Oh, and she's side-eyeing us, giving us a filthy look, like, Oh, no, I don't. And if you don't want to lose weight, that's fine. But you're not going to be healthy. And let me tell you, guys, you know, looking at the screen, these, speaking of tiggle bitties, these are some boobies. Oh, my goodness. They are. I mean, I, I appreciate a nice boob, but just as much as the next one, they are pleasant to look at. I'm not, not essaying her or anything. I'm just giving her credit. They are impressive, but she needs to lose some weight. And those have to hurt her back. They're a lot bigger than mine. And mine are big. And they hurt my back and stuff like that. So she's really got to have some neck and back problems. Um, and if she lost weight, she would surely, surely lose some there. But she just looks like she's built that she would still kind of have them no matter how she was built. But, uh, yeah, she needs to lose some weight. That's going to really start straining her upper neck or her, her upper back, her neck, her middle, even lower back. Uh, it's got to be feeling this. 
I mean, she's, a, she's an attractive woman. This is, I've seen this one before. It's uh, a woman looking in a mirror in like a, a shorts jumpsuit kind of a thing. And there's a comment that says, I wish I was as skinny as you. And they're totally, totally being a troll. I know. No. And she's saying, I know when she's rubbing her jaw. Again, a super giant fupa, a gut, an apron, really, really big legs. You can't really, you can kind of see where her knees are, but her lower leg is there. Guys, she's not everybody can obese. Achieve. It's not anything to be proud of. And the fact that we are promoting this and pushing it and saying it's okay and beautiful, even in mainstream media, is absolutely freaking crazy. It's not. Leave this. Okay. So skinny. And again, these women are secretly so jealous of thinner, fitter women and people, especially women. And they will never admit it. I can admit it. I'm absolutely jealous of the women who are thinner and fitter than me. But that is like motivating me to want to get better. That and plus good health, not just mocking them. Skinny legends. Skinny legends. Yeah, skinny legend. Don't we all want to be? They do. They do. If they could take a pill and be skinny overnight, they freaking would. If they say otherwise, they're lying. And soak it in. Yeah, soak it in. Soak it in, boys. You're welcome. There's people in the background laughing and stuff. They should be like, yo, you seriously need to lose weight. If you loved this woman and cared about her, you would be like, dude, yeah, you're being funny and all, but you need to lose some weight. Seriously, you need to drop about 150 pounds. Sometimes I get really sick. People are like, oh, are you so skinny? It's like, ugh. Just achieve it. Cute little dogs running around there. You know what? I'm tired of the belly slander. I think bellies are the cutest fucking things in the world. Look at this. Okay, so this is a skinny girl talking about how she thinks bellies are super cute. Look at my belly. She's trying to stick hers out, but she's actually the size that most women and a build most women should be. Um, but bellies, uh, flat bellies are nice. Uh, a tiny little bit of belly is cute. But these big old bellies we see in this video, no. Negative ghost rider. They're not. They symbolize poor health. And that's why they're bad. Okay. I, you should love your size. They point is big enough. All Okay, I'm going to skip past this skinny girl who's talking about bellies when she doesn't really have one. Okay, this is a lady I love them, and if you saying, have a belly say, um, do it. Okay, love. Uh, okay, well, can you make this into a sound, please? Wait, keep up with this. The thin people that hate fat people don't hate fat people because they're fat. They hate them because every time they see a fat person that is simultaneously happy, it invalidates their entire experience of being thin and being afraid of being fat. It doesn't invalidate anything. It's just like, well, if you want to, you're fat, whatever. Um, that doesn't mean a thin person uh gets upset because, oh that fat person's happy with their life that invalidates me and my fear of being fat because being fat is supposed to be bad well being fat is bad and they can think whatever they want you being happy because you're fat does not invalidate anything if anything it invalidates your mental health because to be more obese and especially morbidly obese you shouldn't be happy about that so the only person you're invalidating is yourself one of the most common okay this one says uh there's a comment on screen saying and it's like a picture out of an airplane window it says what about giving consideration to the person who has to sit in the adjacent seat yes absolutely because if you can't fit into a seat you should buy a second one it's not fair that these people want these two and three plus free seats. If my carry-on or my luggage is an ounce above the weight limit, I got to pay 20, 30, whatever they're charging now for more luggage. But if you can carry the weight of two people, that, no, that's not fair and it's not right. Comments I get when it comes to flying while plus size 
is why don't you consider the people that are sitting next to you? Oh, because you can't. Because these people, only their comfort and, and only they matter, right? I mean, these fat activists are very selfish in so many ways. I'm not really sure where people get this idea from because every... We get the idea because you have fat activists pushing for two and three plus free seats and to make the seats bigger and to make thin people pick up the tab. Plus size person I've ever spoken to agrees that we spend the entire time trying to make ourselves smaller so the person next to us is more comfortable. You, you're doing it because you're you're insecure about not fitting into a seat. And those seats aren't the biggest. And, you know, people, I, I even when I like fly, I try to keep like, I'm just like, they're not even a small fat, but I'm still clinically obese. I still squeeze my shoulders in and stuff and try to stay in my my paid space. It's just a courtesy. And if you really can't fit in, then you need to buy a second seat, love. Okay? That's just how it is. Suck it up. If you don't want to buy a second seat, quit eating yourself out of one seat. That can easily be cured by losing some weight. I know that's not fun. I know that's more work. But that is facts is facts. Even if that means causing ourselves some pain and discomfort. I can promise you that not a second goes by where we're not thinking about the space we take up. So with that in mind, maybe you should direct your anger at the airlines instead? What are you? No, 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 because they have to make money. The planes are only so big. They have to try to maximize capacity. Oh, my God. Now, this is Ruthie. She was a vegan. I think this is still when she's a vegan. Um, and she, ever since she started doing TikTok, has seriously looks like she's put on about 65, 70 pounds. Says, what I eat in a fat is in a day is a fat person that doesn't want to change their body to be smaller. So in other words, I don't want to do the work and give up the tasty, uh, that gives person. me the food gasms and, and do the work and eat like a normal person. So yeah, that, that's what it should say. I translated it for you. And she's one of the ones that's really bad about eating like vegan, like just junk and processed food. It's like awful, like mad carbs and sugar. And, you know. That doesn't want to change their body or be smaller. Breakfast hot dog. A vegan hot dog on a white bun. Hot dog before my piercing appointment. A uh, vanilla oat milk latte from Starbucks, so a lot of sugar. Vanilla oat milk latte from Starbucks. I give her credit, at least she got a smaller one. Most of the time they're cure they're getting the extra super gigunda sized. And I think she's actually a pretty girl. She's got beautiful eyes, pretty hair. She's a very attractive girl, but you can't see her features really because when you get so big, you know, even on your face, you lose the appearance of what your jawline and cheekbones and everything actually look like. It's very, very sad. I got a uh, plain corn and put your own stuff on it. Okay, that's corn scorn. That's not too bad. Plain corn from the elope man and put my own stuff on it. Uh, sweet potato fries. So they're just like fries that are like a highly processed junk food. Even if they're vegan, they're still not healthy, guys. Not healthy at all. Sweet potato chippies. I made tacos dorados with guacamole and... Okay, that's not too bad. I mean, it's tacos. They look a little fried, but, you know, having, like, stuff like this every now and then is not too bad. As long as you're not having it every meal of every day. Spanish rice. Strawberry. Oh. I love cake, guys. Cake and ice cream. That's like two of my biggest, biggest, biggest weaknesses. I believe I've mentioned it before how much I love cake. And I would I would want to eat half of this. And I'm assuming it's probably vegan. Again, having a little treat, stuff like this. It's your friend's birthday, have a piece of cake, you know. Unless it's going to totally send you off the rails, then maybe maybe try not to. But indulging every now and then and, and stuff is, is not bad. You should do it, you know, just live a little. But uh, for the most part, food needs to be uh, more like, uh, what can it do for me? What good's it doing for me? Not just eating for pleasure. This is an eating for pleasure thing. And that's okay once in a while. Cherry cake for my friend's birthday. More chippies. You don't need more chips, Ruthie. Love you, bye. And honestly, she eats a lot more than that to be her size. That may be that day, but it's not a typical day. I don't like extra. I think this is Bethany Frankel, or somebody looks just like her. 
uh, she says, I don't like XL and XXL. <laughs> why, why do we have to have it? I do think we should have clothes to accommodate bigger people, but dude, like this torrid size six X and beyond is too much. Like if people didn't have the options that are super cute and whatnot, they would have no choice but to lose some damn weight. I think there should be exercise clothes and stuff and like some basically t-shirts and sweatshirts in these sizes. But the more we accommodate bigger and bigger sizes, these people just keep getting themselves bigger and bigger. There's no incentive to lose weight or to better yourself. Extra large and extra, extra large. What the hell? Why do we have to have extra? See, this is what happens when thin people discover body positivity. Oh, God. She's not wrong. Now, here's a woman in like a late, in like pantyhose and underwear and a bra. Again, super, super abdominally, viscerally obese, uh, height to weight ratio of damn. And um, I'm not saying she's unattractive or not, but that body is unattractive from a person who's not attracted to illness and sickness and, and death. I'm not a feeder. Uh, and I just feel like this body shape. It, it, human bodies can get to this shape. It's amazing what the human body should do, can do, but we are not meant to be this size. And she's just sitting there with this cockamamie, just like smug look on her face. It's like, okay, what do you have to be smug about? You're like gluttoning yourself into illness and poor health and early death. It's like, I don't get it. But I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not mad that she's just putting clothes on and like showing an outfit on TikTok. It's just this smugness and it literally is glorifying illness and obesity. Puma has it, he's the one I'm yeah. leaving. It's just I'm trying to like get a get around the copyright with the song. <laughs> Maybe I'll mute her real quick. Okay, yeah. So she put on an outfit. Nothing wrong with that. I think you should feel cute and stuff like that. And feel confident in yourself. But you should want to better yourself. How do they get away with all the copyright music? Bless you, honey. How do they get away with all the copyright music on TikTok? When you can't even play, like, a note of it on YouTube. What I eat in a What I eat in a day as a fat person... This day was whack as hell. I'm not even going to lie. Okay, don't talk like that. Um, first of all, let's start with a big old crusty cheap bread. Today, as a fat person, lol, this day was whack as hell. I'm not even going to lie. With hummus, that probably tastes pretty good. I love hummus. Love it with some, like, lukewarm tortilla chips or any tortilla chip. Uh, lettuce, carrots, celery. I, I put it on everything. It's just delicious. It's amazing. But you got to watch because it's like very, it's like higher in calories and stuff because of the tahini and stuff. But if you're eating it with vegetables or on some meat, bless you, honey. My son keeps uh, sneezing. Or on some meat or on something else. I use it as, I've used it as a base for like a salad dressing. That's not too bad. But eating it with like a giant half a baguette is probably not the way to start your day. Especially with the morning. You need to start your day with some proteins and good fats. These people are just setting themselves up for blood sugar spikes and drops, insulin spikes and, and drops and, and, and hunger, and more hunger and, and cravings. Hummus and pita. Freezer burn. Oh my God. A whole thing of tater tots. I would eat a whole bag of tater tots. They're like engineered to be that way. They're absolute garbage. So right now all she's had is Processed carbs on top of processed carbs, so sugar on top of sugar, uh, a little bit of the uh, hummus, which isn't bad, she probably ate too much, uh, and no protein yet, no good fat, all this highly inflammatory, hydrogenated seed oils, oh, I mean, just break my soul, uh, it's bad. Tots, turmeric, ginger, tofu, and broccoli soup. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look too bad. Um, if you're not into the tofu, that would be really good. But some shrimp or some chicken, even some beef, bulk it up with some more veggies. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not mad about that. Was the only good thing? More bread. Oh my God, and that's a you more bread, and that's a huge like white store bought baguette too. No, just just don't. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Cereal, okay. Okay, so that's like cereal, but 
But guys, a serving of cereal is a lot smaller than, than you would think. This is probably like five servings of cereal. No joke. And it's like just a sugary processed cereal. I don't know if it has whole milk or not, but this is not good. This is too much. It's not going to fill you up because when I eat cereal, I, will eat a whole, I can eat a whole box. You know what I mean? It's just not filling and it's got all the corn syrup and the sugar and the processed carbs and it makes you want to eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. That's the whole point. Bye. Bye. This says, uh, why are you breathing so hard? And it's like a really, really big girl again with a giant apron. Big, she's very like morbidly obese. Ah. And uh, she's like singing into like the handle of a broom or something, uh, trying to be super, super sultry, sexy jazz singer type deal. And if that's what you find sexy, okay, fine, whatever. Not my personal bag, but you know, she could get on here and sing if she wants. And then that's, that's not a problem. It's showing off the big old unhealthy body that's the problem. And. And it's like, why are these people allowed to be sitting around dancing half naked in their underwear and stuff like that? But somebody like Ilona from Chikara Transformations is in a show bikini showing off her body for her physique and she gets like demonetized. <laughs> I, I don't I don't get it. Facts. I was taught that exercise was a way to that I deserved to be punished. You you shouldn't see exercise as a punishment at all. Uh, it should be used. You don't have to lose weight or exercise to lose weight, guys. You can just eat within your calorie limits, eat lower carb, eat lots of good whole foods. As long as you're eating for your activity level and your size and your, all that, you can lose weight. But uh, exercise is important for mobility and longevity and cardiovascular health. And you shouldn't punish yourself with exercise. Absolutely find something that you like doing and do it and i should suffer in order to have this thin some people like that suffering aspect of a hard workout though <laughs> it is it's individual body i now know that's not true <laughs> i can move my body in, in really fun ways you can't move your body that much with your size and your giant stomach and stuff like that i'm sorry you the fat physically hinders you is that i can dance all night and sweat all of it out i would close my eyes when i danced because it was the uh, it's cool if you go and dance dance for an hour or two a day get some exercise and then lose a little bit of, eat a little healthier you'll drop weight only way that i could move my body freely without me thinking about the way that i was moving without me thinking about the way that people this woman looks like i don't know if she has like chin hair and stuff i'm not trying to shame her but she clearly has like some hormonal problems, uh, probably severe PCOS, maybe endometriosis, definitely hormonal problems that cause uh, the elevation and uh, testosterone and stuff like that in the woman's body. And that's what causes women with PCOS to grow like, we all have like fine facial hair on our face and fine hair on our body, but she's growing like man type hair. And that is from hormonal imbalances. That's not good. People were looking at me. Again, she's another one. Carries a ton of her weight, most of it, in, in, her, in her abdomen, her torso area. I now still love to close my eyes when I dance just because it's fun, but I, I can do it without closing my eyes. I have lipedema. It is a genetic condition that affects one in 10 of those assigned female at birth. This is Little Fury, and she's a big, big girl. She's pretty popular. She has lipedema but let me tell you guys these people are not 100 percent lipedema and your lipedema or lymphedema won't lymphede lymphedema a lot of times won't even develop if you don't gain weight um but lipedema there are people with women with lipedema who are 120 pounds it will not get this bad in advance if you watch your weight it is a buildup of fat that, that hardens and cannot like be lost. You have to have it removed. If you're not gaining weight and you're at a healthy size, it's not going to get you mungo. So, and either way, she could still lose 150 pounds with her lipid, lipedema and then she could have the rest removed. She's not all lipedema, guys. 
Basically, lymphatic fluid leaks through your connective tissue and infiltrates fat cells, changing their cellular structure. This makes the cells fibrotic and non-metabolic. That means you cannot lose it through diet or exercise. It can only... No, but diet helps it, and it helps it from getting worse. And then you can have the lipedema liposuction procedures to get it removed, and then it won't get, get bad again be removed through surgical intervention such as and look she's still extremely overweight or i have arms kind of like that and they gross me out so bad but she, she clearly that shows she needs to lose weight liposuction or manual extraction yeah. surgery or just yeah but they're not going to do it if you aren't willing to lose weight and if you're just going to keep eating and, and just get it back to a bad state again there's no point in doing invasive procedures if you're not going to change your ways removing the tissue in general liposuction can she's not an unpretty girl she's pretty but i mean look at her stomach that's not lipedema that's weight she needs to lose but she has a pretty face she's a pretty girl not remove all lipedema because the nodules because i mean look look at her giant fupa and stomach that's that that that's just obesity that's just eating too much are anywhere between the size of a grain of rice to the size of your fist unlike fat it doesn't form in just one big solid piece this can often lead to a cottage cheese type appearance yeah and i already said you can get it removed you know that but you have to maintain yourself with proper diet nutrition and exercise that many mistake for cellulite this condition can also become incredibly painful yeah it's not fun so i don't know why you would want to stay big or keep getting bigger and make it worse because the nodules actually damage the fascia that they attach themselves to some of the symptoms include unfortunately a lot of insurances do not cover it and I'm not trying to be mean, but her lipedema would not be this bad if she did not get to this size. I, I'm sorry. It's just the... Gosh, okay. Consider it. White women can be... Wait, let's... Okay, here's... Oh, this woman. Uh, I forget her name, but I've seen her. It says, when fat faves lose weight. Okay, so she's going to damn someone to hell and chastise them and all up and down and stuff like that because somebody had the nerve to lose weight and offend her because they didn't want to look like her is what it came down to. And these people who lose weight prove these guys wrong when they say, you can never lose weight. Weight's not controllable. Okay, y'all right. Let's talk about it. I don't have all the answers, but what I can tell you is I hate watching the same toxic patterns happening over and over on my your patterns of telling people and encouraging people to be unhealthy, get them more unhealthy and stay unhealthy is a toxic pattern that you see online. But you don't talk about that. And I will and start I with start this so it. then people don't get mad. And this can be a really tough pill to swallow. And this isn't from like some skinny bitch talking. I'm a fat person. I'm a fat girl. I'm clinically obese. I'm working on it. Uh, so it's, it's not just like me sitting here fat shaming because I'm some skinny skinny biatch that hates fat people but no one just for those of you guys who who may be new and don't know me <laughs> owes you their body and it's never appropriate under any circumstance to share with someone negative thoughts or feelings about how their body looks or so in other words you can't give an opinion you can only say things that that she would let you say something good about her body oh you're beautiful you're wonderful you're but you're not allowed to say anything negative and that, that's the problem with the society is we, we coddle and kiss butt and ass pat and all that. And it's, it's, it's leading, we're in trouble, guys. Um, nobody owes you their body or whatever, but you, we share health care costs and hospitals and, and Medicare, Medicaid costs and stuff like that. Your family, your friends, people like me who is a paramedic or a hospital worker who have to lift you and risk hurting themselves and takes up more resources. And we need to make and, and, and manufacture and ship more food to, to, to get to you, to feed you, to provide for you. And, and you eating and taking and using more than your fair share. 
It does affect everybody, though. It does. It has changed. In the grand scheme of things, if there was just some one-off really super fat person, maybe not so much. It would affect their family and, oh, sorry about you guys' luck. But this is like a societal problem. But here's the toxic pattern. Fat persona loses weight. Fat fan expresses some hurt or disappointment. And then thin fans take that as their opportunity to go in and be like, you know, fuck you, body positive police. Because they should. Because it's proof that it's not genetics, that it is your lifestyle, that you can change, and, and that it makes people happier. They're mad that all these people who lose weight are happier and feel better and get more outside reinforcement because they are mad that it's just a fact. I'm sorry, guys. Thinner bodies, fitter bodies are better looking than super obese, unhealthy bodies. And they are mad because this is just, it reinforces it. And they don't want to hear it because that's outside of their echo chamber and they don't like reality. Mind your business. They look amazing. Oh, mind your business, she says, but it's okay. They'll go in and harass thin people or the former fat. You know what I mean? So it's okay for them to do it, but not anybody else. Saying they're just doing this for their health and just throw in a bunch of other. Maybe they are just doing it for their health. Maybe they're doing it for some other reason. Maybe it's just because they don't want to look like you. And that's fine. It doesn't matter the choice. The fact is, is they did it. They prove you wrong. They did the work. They're getting the praise that you want badly and you don't like it. They're like anti-fat, fat phobic sentiments just for good measure. I'm proudly fat phobic, guys. I, I admit it all the time. And then the persona will often encourage this type of discourse. If you Yeah, yeah. You should encourage people to want to be healthier and make better choices and take better care of themselves. Have some self-respect. You know what I mean? They should. Because you can lose weight and you can keep it off and it doesn't have to be torture and you don't have to starve and you're not always going to develop a restrictive eating disorder. This is insane. I forgot how triggered I get making these videos. <laughs> you are not fat and have never been fat. Here's the context that you're missing. Imagine every piece of media that you engage with, every movie, TV show, song, all of it tells you you're bad and wrong. And then you find one little corner of the world that says, you know what? No, you can be loved and successful and funny and talented and adored. Well, you can be. But that doesn't make you healthy and it doesn't make it okay for you to be okay with that and encourage other people to be that way. For the reasons I listed earlier in the video. Just as you are. And then that window slams shut. And if you're not encouraging other people to be this way, fine, whatever. That's fine. You do you. But this movement is dangerous and it's pushing people to be sick and stay sick and get sicker, in fact. And tells you the same things that the rest of the world has told you. It's not about that. So in other words, find a hug box, find an echo chamber and don't leave it and don't listen to the rest of the world in reality because your echo chamber is where you feel safe and it's your happy place. But it's not the place that's the best for you. It's not the place that's going to tell you what you actually need to hear and make you healthy and make you... Oh, goodness. Oh, you, you guys know what I'm saying. Person. It's about fat people when the world has ostracized them. You guys are the majority of people in the world, at least the developed world in the United States, Australia, Canada, New England, or uh, New England. I'm working on a game right now. I'm living in New England in that game. Um, England, like the UK and stuff, uh, even other like countries and stuff. Some of them, Mexico, uh, Samoa. Obesity is off the charts. More people are overweight now and many, many more are obese and getting into the morbidly obese state. Healthy, thin, actual fit, proper sized people are an exception now, not the rule. So I don't know what you're talking about. Making an individual their safe space. And maybe a diet talk is really normal in your circle. It is. It's normal. We talk about food and every, we talk about everything. That's just human nature. And the people you hang out with, but other people have had to do a lot of work to eliminate diet talk and diet culture. Instead of doing all the actual work to lose weight. From their community. Diet and weight loss talk is sensitive for good reason. Like one in four or five people end up with an eating disorder. 
No, they don't. I'm telling you. No, they don't. I don't know anybody who's died and just lose some weight who actually ended up with an eating disorder. I have disordered eating, but that's triggered from something from when I was little. Uh, and it's been a problem a majority of my life. Um, I didn't just get an eating disorder from going on a diet. This, this, they say this stuff to scare people out of losing weight. Guys, don't be afraid that you're going to develop like deadly, you know, because, you know, we can't say the whole world on YouTube. Um, just because you want to go on a, a, a diet and lose 10, 20, 40, 50, 60 pounds. You know what I mean? It's healthier to pursue th th being thinner and fitter and being a healthy body size than it is to stay big. Now, you don't want to be too thin, obviously not, but pursuing a healthy body size is um, not something. And these mean, ignorant, absolutely demonic people try to literally scare people out of, out of getting healthy. It's, it's evil, in my opinion. Most people, I think like, what, 90 to 98% of people will gain all the weight back. That, that stupid uh, statistic has been debunked a million times over, including the study you got it from, including the guy who did the study said that it was kind of bunk, but that's all you got. And then some, and that diet cycle. Again, they say that to scare people because it's like, oh, if you're fat and you want to lose weight and you say, oh, you'll, you'll gain it back and more. People go, ah, I'll just stay the same or I'll just keep gaining weight because if I lose weight, I'm going to be bigger than I am now anyway. And it's like absolute, it's fear mongering. Cycling can result in worse health outcomes than just staying fat in no, the first place. No, 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 they don't. No, they don't. Staying fat is worse for your health. Oh my God. Okay. I'm done guys. Uh, I will link this video below. Let me know what you think. Let me know about all this craziness. What are your opinions? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Sorry if the audio is not as high quality as it normally is. I will use my, uh, uh, my, my kiddo's going to visit his grandparents today and he wants to play online with a couple of his friends and I have the only headset. So I was definitely going to let him use it and be able to do that. So, all right, guys, let me know what you think. I will uh, talk to you guys in the next one and have a good one.